let's take a look at what we can do when a blood draw doesn't go as planned. Troubleshooting difficult blood draws begins with prevention. One of the most effective strategies is to ensure patients are well hydrated. When permitted, encourage them to drink water before their appointment, as this can help make veins more prominent and accessible. Applying a warm compress to the intended draw site can also help, as heat brings veins closer to the surface. Before applying the tourniquet, let the patient's arm hang below heart level for a short period. Gravity can assist and further enhance vein visibility. Always check both arms rather than defaulting to just one, as vein quality can differ significantly between limbs. When encountering difficult veins, tailor your approach. For small veins, opt for a smaller gauge needle, such as a 23-gauge butterfly. Deep veins require a firm anchor and a slightly deeper needle angle, but always proceed cautiously to avoid injury. Rolling veins can be stabilized using a side anchor technique, where the skin is gently pulled taut to prevent movement. If a vein collapses, try loosening the tourniquet, slowing your draw, or, if you are trained, using a syringe method to reduce suction pressure. Patient-specific factors also play a significant role. Pediatric and elderly patients often have fragile veins, so minimize suction pressure and consider using a butterfly needle for greater control. In obese patients, rely more on palpation than visual cues, be confident in going deeper, and consider using the cephalic vein. For those who are anxious or needle-phobic, use a calm, reassuring tone, explain each step, offer distractions, or have the patient lie down to reduce the risk of fainting. Avoid drawing from edematous arms or limbs filled with excess fluid. This fluid can distort veins and compromise sample quality. Similarly, steer clear of sites with burns, scars, active IVs, or on the side of a mastectomy. If you miss the vein, never dig or fish blindly with the needle. You may gently reposition by pulling back slightly or advancing with care, but limit yourself to two attempts, as per standard policy, before seeking assistance from another trained phlebotomist. When no blood is obtained, consider that the tube's vacuum may be faulty. Try switching to a new tube first. Always keep a few extras within arm's reach of you. If the needle bevel is against the vein wall, a slight rotation or depth adjustment may restore flow. For collapsed veins, loosening the tourniquet or switching to a syringe can help. Other complications, such as hematoma formation, the needle passing through the vein, blood flow stopping or patient fainting, require prompt recognition and appropriate response. Always document any difficulties or complications encountered during the draw, as thorough documentation supports patient safety and continuous quality improvement. Document any difficulties encountered, such as multiple attempts, complications, hematoma, fainting, or deviations from standard protocol. Accurate documentation is essential for patient safety and quality assurance.